People ask me all of the time why I decided to leave my job at age 51 and move to France. And my reasons are different from a lot of people's reasons. It wasn't because I wanted a lower cost of living or I wanted a slower paced lifestyle or even that I wanted access to better health care or food options. It was none of those reasons. And in this video, I'm going to dig in to my primary reason why I moved to France and quit my job and how something that is trending now, something that is really popular now, quiet quitting, how that played a role in my getting to France. Now, if you're new here, a welcome and consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell so you can get notified each time I upload a video about moving abroad, life in France, or finding the confidence and courage to live life on your terms. My name is Patricia Brooks, and as I said, I left my job and I moved to the south of France in 2018. And it's been an incredible experience, even though I didn't know where it would lead. In this video, I'm going to share with you my primary motivation for doing that and how it differs from other people's and how my stopping quiet quitting helped me get here. All right. Before I dig into that motivation piece, I want to give you a little bit of context. So I'm going to take you back to 2010. And that was the year that my dad died. And what that did for me, that got me really in touch with my, my mortality. Yes, yeah, certainly I knew that I would die before my dad died, right? I knew that. But after my dad died, uh, it really hit home because when somebody close to you dies, it, it's, 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 it gives you a different perspective. And so I was in a place in my life where I was just going through the motions in life. And I recognized that I didn't want to die just doing that and doing the bare minimum and you're going home and not really enjoying life. It was kind of a midlife crisis of sorts. And so what I did was I did some, some work on myself. I read self-help books and I started to figure out what I wanted to experience in life. And over the course of that internal journey, I realized that my quiet quitting at work, my going in and doing the bare minimum was actually hurting me. It wasn't helping me. It might've felt good to stick it to the man, but there's this saying that goes, how you do anything is how you do everything. And that really just goes to say that if you think you can give, you know, 60%, eight hours a day at a job and then go home and give your family or yourself a hundred percent, you're probably mistaken. And that is what I found. So when I realized that I said, okay, the jobs that I hold, have held and holding now aren't really right for me, but I want to do the best job that I'm capable of doing. And something amazing happened. I realized that I was happier. I would go home at night and, and realize that I did the best job that I could do. And that felt really good. And that spilled over into my activities um, on the weekends. I decided I was going to take up karate and that I was going to lose weight, you know, and I wound up losing 75 pounds and doing the Weight Watcher program. Now, had I continued to just do the bare minimum, would I have had the energy or effort or even the thought about changing my life in that way? I don't think so. So that laid the foundation for me to feel more empowered. So 2010, my dad died. I woke up to the fact that I was cheating myself and I started giving more of myself to my work and to myself. So three years and two days after my dad died, my mom died. And this, this was a blow as well. Um, I was expecting it. So it was less of a blow. The thing that felt most challenging for me about that was that year after her death, because I wasn't really sure that I could live a good life without the emotional support of a parent. And here I was faced with doing that. 
And when it really hit home was four months after her death. That was when I first broke down in tears. It was December 29th and it was a Sunday. And I remember it was 9.30 or 10 o'clock at night and I was in bed uh, because I had the start of a new job the following day. And tears started rolling down my face. And then all of a sudden I was just blubbering. It was, I was bawling. And I sat up in bed gasping for air as I, as I cried. And I was wondering what was going on. And I realized what it was, was that I hadn't received a call from my mom that night saying, Oh, Patricia, you know, good luck on your new job. You're going to do a great job. You're going to make lots of friends. You're going to do a great job because you're smart. You're, you're talented. All of those things that my mom would have said the day before a first day, you know, the day before my first day of first grade, the day before my, my first day of college, the day before first day of any new job, she was there right there encouraging me. And this time she wasn't because she was gone. And that just really tore me up anyway. And I needed it because my first day was um, a little lackluster. It seemed like they weren't even expecting me. But anyway, that's a story for another day. At the end of that first year without my mom or my dad, I recognized that I did pretty well. And instead of being sad on the anniversary of her death, I was elated. And it's a weird emotion to, to say, but I felt so empowered because I had done well. I had sold my mom's house. I had um, actually got a new job a couple of months after her death. I had done well in that job. I showed up fully in that job, even though uh, it uh, started out on a rocky foot. And... Um, I realized that, yeah, I would be able to do this thing called life on my own and do it well because my parents had prepared me well and I had learned um, and I was strong enough to do it. And so that put me into this next bracket of solo traveling. I went to Quebec City, Canada, where I decided I wanted to live in a French speaking country. But because I had started to show up more fully, you know, years earlier. And because now I was encouraged and felt empowered by having lived this first year without a living parent, that that sent me out looking for other challenges to find. And so I did. But the thing about that was, you know, I wrote my, my first book and that was great for about two or three months afterwards. And then I was looking for the next challenge and the next challenge. And so this leads to my primary motivation for wanting to move abroad. I'd gone through this midlife crisis. Now I was awakening to the power that I had within me. And I thought, hmm, I could continue doing what I'm doing in the United States, looking for and finding things that would challenge me. Um, that might be short-lived. I could continue going into this job that I really didn't like and tolerate it and do a good job, but I was ready for the next step. I was ready for the next chapter in my life. And for me, that next chapter included living in a foreign country because I believed that living in France would give me the challenges that I sought and that they wouldn't be short-lived, that I wouldn't get to France and then six months later, I would be looking for the next challenge. No, no, no. And I have not. And I still am having challenges that, that stretch me, that help me to grow, that help me to develop personally, which is really important to me. That was my motivation for wanting to move abroad. Now, I did another video about the four primary motivating factors that people have when they move abroad. And I'll put that up here. It's, it's interesting. It's psychologically based. Um, but for me, it was all about achievement and fulfilling my, my purpose in life, you know? And so, um, and it's done that, as I said, now you may be considering a move abroad for any number of reasons, and you might feel a little bit unsure about where to start or if it's right for you, or if it's even possible for you. And if that's the case, I'd love to learn more um, and have a conversation with you to see where you are, where you want to be, what might be holding you back, and if our working together can help you get there sooner and with more joy. So I'm going to put a link to my calendar 
in the description where you can schedule time for us to talk. Now, I spoke about quiet quitting in this video and my thoughts about it. It's a hot topic. Do you think that quiet quitting is a good thing? Do you think it's harmful? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Now, if you found this video helpful or insightful, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share it, subscribe, and I will see you again next time. Bye for now.